Hi there, I'm Colin Lamb, AKA the Tone Wizard, and this is about the 12th time I've tried to start this video. I hope you're doing very well wherever you may be, and just for your information, my wife has been heckling me from the other room. Um, we have a tiny apartment, and I thank you for her patience in the process, but now I'm gonna start this damn video. So before I do, I just wanna say thank you to everybody who tuned into my live stream last Friday. It was a lot of fun talking to you guys uh, and getting more um, feedback on that series that I've been doing. If you're new here, I did a series called Getting Into Fish that's similar to this series. And basically, I picked a band that I really wanted to get into, and I started checking it out. And a lot of the fun of that um, process has been talking to people who've given me so many suggestions. And um, I, I talked to people from all over America. I had a, had a show, um, a panel show where I talked to a guy from Portland and a guy in New York, and I'm up here north of the border. So that's been a lot of fun. And I thought I would diversify the content here and try to get into another band. So that's where we're going with this today. But if you did join me on the last uh, live stream, thank you very much. If you weren't there, consider joining me on the next one. I will be making a live show announcement at the end of this uh, video. And and uh, also uh, look out for a new episode of Ween Talk that I'm doing on Sunday. I'm going to have a guest on that I'm looking very much forward to um, talking to. He's got a new project that I really enjoy, and uh, hopefully I can help him get the word out about that. So uh, if you're uh, new here, please feel subs free to subscribe to the channel or check out some of my other crap. Or don't. No, it's entirely up to you. Um, so the title of this video is going to be the topic of these videos, a new series that I'm hopefully going to get get going here. Um, but it's going to be, I'm trying to get into Frank Zappa. All right. Um, and I have to say, I've tried to get into Zappa before, and it just hasn't taken. Uh, the last time I tried to get into Frank Zappa through the miracle of the Spotify algorithm, I actually ended up getting into Jethro Tull. Um, but the reason that I'm trying to get in here is that a lot of my friends and former bandmates and musicians that I play with, they all really revere Frank Zappa and they all talk about Frank Zappa and play Frank Zappa. And I kind of feel like the odd man out. And I also feel like maybe there's something I'm missing in there. So I just thought this would be a great band to get into. And just like Fish, which I just did my series on, there is a ton of music, live footage, all sorts of shit. I think he even maintained his own archives. So I feel like there's a lot of stuff there. And, um, like I said at the start of the video, been feeling a little down lately, and some new music would be just what the fucking doctor ordered. So at any rate, um, let's get right into it. So what do I know about Frank Zappa? So I didn't do a lot of research before this video. I never do a lot of fucking research for any of my videos. Probably a, a big downfall of the channel. But at any rate... Um, I, I didn't want to do a lot of research. I just wanted to give you my sort of out-of-the-gate opinion, what I what I know, what my impressions are uh, about Frank Zappa. And obviously, some of them are probably going to be wrong. And throughout um, this series, I'd really like feedback, um, any suggestions you have in terms of documentaries, albums, interviews, uh, articles, or anecdotes, anything you have, just throw them my way. I will definitely check them out and talk about them on uh, later episodes. And as with all of my series, if you want to come on and be a guest and talk about Frank Zappa, uh, by all means, get in touch with me through one of my social channels or through the email in the about section of my channel. And uh, we can make that happen over Zoom. But anyways, what the fuck do I know about Frank Zappa? Well, I know that he was a musical prodigy. I know that he was a superb guitar player by all accounts. Uh, I know that he was a renowned composer and a band leader, and I have to say that is kind of my impression of what Frank Zappa is. It's my understanding that he had many iterations of his of his of his bands, touring bands, and studio bands, and that um, you had to be something special to be in the band, or he would kind of take you in and kind of morph you into what he wanted you to be. So in that in that respect, he's kind of been a composer as the main kind of author of all the music, and that he puts all these bands together to serve his his evil will. Um, if that's what it is. But I, I do know about the Mothers of Invention, which I think is a fucking fantastic band name. I've always been a fan of the expression, necessity is the mother of all invention, um, which we won't get into. But I just love that phrase, and I love the band name. I would use that fucking band name, I want to believe, if it didn't already exist. Um, so I, I, as I said earlier, I, I'm aware that he maintained his own personal archives and I'm kind of interested in that because that, that seems, I know Prince did that. He had like a, I think Prince had a literal fucking vault. Um, you know, and, and by the way, I got, I got a fucking terabyte hard drive, you know, underneath the microwave full of music that nobody's ever going to hear. So I, I can kind of respect 
that that idea. But it also seems like a bit of a vanity vanity project. I, I don't know. Let me let me know about that. If you know more about the archives or if he's released them, because actually quite recently, I think Neil Young put his archives up online. I think you can pay a membership fee and just go on there and click through all that stuff. I actually took a little bit of a look at that stuff, but I never paid for it. I never got deep into it. So let me know if you know about his his alleged archives. Um, I also know that he performed with John Lennon. Um, I think I've seen or heard some footage of that. I, I've heard about that. I'm a huge Beatles fan, so I do know about that. And of course, um, I know that he has children named Dweezil and Mew, Moon Unit, and I think Dweezil um, still tours. I think he came to Vancouver a couple of years ago, but I missed that. Uh, and last of all, I, I know that he was a, a fairly grumpy bastard, or at least that was my impression of him, because uh, a lot of the interview footage that I've seen from him, and a lot of the photos as well, I mean, could you say that that's a happy look on a man's face? I don't know. I don't know. A bald man, uh, I am. I'm not going to criticize the hair. But yeah, a lot of lot of the, the video footage that I've seen of him, he seems kind of worked up and grumpy. He's kind of coming in a little jilted or a little jaded. And I'm kind of looking forward to see what the fuck was pissing Frank Zappa off so much. So yeah, that that's kind of my impression. And again, that's not a researched impression. That's just what I've accumulated as I bumbled through life on my seemingly endless journey of discover, discovery and wonder. It was supposed to be wonder and discovery. I actually wrote that down, and I fucked it up. Like I fucked up the start of this video so many times. If you're new to the channel, there's a lot of swearing. There's a lot of impromptu anger, and it, it keeps them coming back. 341 subscribers can't be wrong. Um, anyways, so that's kind of what I know sort of already about um, Frank. And I, like I said, I've, tried, I've made a couple of attempts to get into Frank in the past. And I just went to YouTube, typed in Frank Z, and then hit enter. I didn't even type the whole fucking name. That's the miracle of the YouTube algorithm. And the first thing that I saw that came up was uh, an interview that he did with, a, a, um, you know, I got to say a real trooper um, from MTV, I think it was, in 1984. It was 12 8 uh, 1984 And um, by the way, if, if, you're, if you're just uh, on my channel and you're not, not into Zappa, um, you know what, maybe come along with me here and, and let me know what you find as well. But anyways, I saw this interview from 1984, the year of the Tone Wizard's illustrious birth, in fact. Um, um, yeah, I saw this interview with him with a, a woman, and I'm going to put a link to this uh, in the description of the video. But basically, <laughs> I don't know who set the interview up. I don't know why he accepted the interview. I don't know... I don't know who thought any of it was a good idea because right from like the first couple of seconds of the video, it becomes painfully clear. And I, I think, for, I, yeah, it becomes very clear that he doesn't want to be there, that the woman feels bad about having to give the interview and that he's not going to probably do anything that, that, that or say anything that MTV is going to be happy about. And, and I just picked out some funny parts that I just wanted to talk about. Um, the, um, the interviewer was asking him what kind of music or in, I can't remember what but he was, she was asking him what he was into, and he said jazz dish discharge party hats. I don't know what that is. I gotta look that shit up, and maybe I will. I'm gonna circle that. I'm gonna take a little note here. I'm gonna look that up, and on the next episode, hopefully, I can figure out what jazz discharge party hats is. And um, he referred to the '60s folk rock in LA. I think I think they may have been based out of uh, LA. The Mothers of Invention, Frank Zappa. But he talks about the '60s scene there, um, the folk rock scene with the birds. Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he called it flower power stupidity. And I think she she kind of said, oh, if there's anything you don't want me to ask you about, Frank, um, just let me know. And he's just like, yeah, I will. And again, it just baffles me as to why did he accept the interview? How much of that was ever aired on TV? And who benefited from that in any way? And that kind of gets into the, the, the kind of notion that I have of him being grumpy. like, And that's maybe that's part of the reason why he hasn't appealed to me. Because I will say that he always seems like the guy who's like, he's definitely intelligent, but he wants to let you know that constantly. And he assumes that you're not. And he also kind of seems like just in this is just my first impression, by the way, I could be totally wrong, but he kind of seems like a bit of a know it all and a bit of a dick. And if you're a big Zappa fan, I may be by the end of this series as well. I mean, I went into the fish series that I did getting into fish with a lot of skepticism. And now I can say that I'm a fucking fan and I kind of don't need to say getting into fish in the title of those videos anymore. And I might not have to say this with Zappa. 
But yeah, he just seems like something's kind of, like you know, just, he's always sitting on something. You know, it's kind of just nagging at him, and he's he's bothered by something. So hopefully, I can get into that a little bit. Anyways, um, I think that the interview is is worth watching because he says some pretty prophetic stuff for the time. He basically describes how the current climate in 1984 of MTV was basically using the artists and he kind of says you hear well he does say this is a quote you hear on mtv should know about formula music come on give me a break let's face it it's mass formulation and that's a bit of a paraphrase but he also goes on to basically describe how the record companies make the bands at that time they probably still do now but they make the bands pay for the music video and that the music video promotes the album and that the music label makes the bulk of the money off the album. So in that in that process, he basically describes how it's it's just a, a garbage cycle for the artist. And I think that that's relevant today as well. And it was definitely relevant uh, in the heydays of the uh, of the record industry, which were, in my opinion, the '90s, where it was just an absolute factory of churning shit out by that point and totally abusing the uh, the artist. But that's another conversation. Um, in that interview, he also talks about how when he played with John Lennon, John Lennon, they recorded the the sessions, and John Lennon basically stole his song called King Kong, used the recording on an album, changed the name of the song to Jam Rag, and gave himself and Yoko Ono the songwriting credits. Now, I haven't heard that song, but unless... Whoa, Jesus. That was a loud noise that came through my computer. Like I say, I haven't heard that the song, but... Unless there's a lot of discordant yelling and yodeling and female screaming, I highly doubt Yoko Ono had anything to do with the creation of that song. Um, so he also in that video describes um, how he doesn't like the written guitar solo and how he feels like a lot of his contemporaries from the sec- late 60s and and 70s were just you know basically writing a guitar solo and then performing it over and over and over again and how he himself could never exist in that stratosphere um so i just want to say that that video is really worth watching if you're not uh into frank uh, zappa and and you're like myself and you're looking to get into it because um it kind of gives you a bit of a nutshell in my opinion of of what you know of, of what his his vague projection is like if you're not really a lot into him i think that that sums up a lot of things that i've said and truthfully a lot of my opinions may be based on that video that i've watched before but i don't know i'm looking forward to getting into it in terms of the actual music um i a friend of mine a bass player in one of my bands he recommended that i listen to joe's garage and i got into it i struggled into some of it but it just didn't stick it didn't make an impression on me um and it didn't give me a vibe that i could relate to in the moment i like to put on music when i'm driving as i'm sure most of you do or in transit or whatever and i like it to bring the mood up and it just didn't do it for me i don't know why maybe there's something wrong with my brain but i'm looking forward to getting into it and i will also say that I've had some comments with my trying to get into fish videos that people were saying, like, you shouldn't have to try if you're just into it, you're into it. But I don't think that's true, particularly in the case of an artist like Fish or even Ween to some extent, or most certainly Frank Zappa, where there's a huge amount of content. And if you just randomly pick a song out of like 400 pieces of music, you might not like it. But to that point, I'm a huge Beatles fan, but there's a catalog of over 260 songs, I think. And there's probably 20 or 30 of them that I don't like and didn't like when I first heard them, such that if you just dropped into the Beatles, if I were to have originally just dropped into that catalog and chosen a song, I wouldn't have liked the Beatles based on those songs if I just heard those songs. So I'm definitely looking forward to getting into this, and I really would appreciate your suggestions as to where to start. Obviously, I'm into Fish, and I'm into Ween, and I think that there's a lot of fan crossover there um, into Frank Zappa, and I did see Zappa come up in some of the comments on my Ween show and in the Fish show. So definitely give me your 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 thoughts there. So, um, and by the way, when I that was when I did that initial search there, that's when it brought me to Jethro Tull. And I should really do a show about Jethro Tull because I think there's a lot there. There's a lot of pure joy there. Um, and uh, that that's a photo I forgot to scan to, but that's from the interview. And I think that that picture pretty much just like, if there's a guy in a room looking at you like that, waiting for you to start talking, you know that the conversation's not going to go however you thought it was going to go. And you know that he doesn't want to be there. That's like, if I were, to, I, I want to get that on a t-shirt that just says like, what? You know, that's like, that That could be my stepdad. The only thing missing from his mouth is a cigarette as I ask him if I can go play in the afternoon instead of 
refill the pool that we never filled with water, stepdad. Anyways, that's a fucking whole different conversation. Um, okay, so my overall impression at this point is that I don't really dig the, the vibe, and I think the vibe to me, I'm just, without a lot of experience in, in Frank Zappa, is just this poetic snarkiness and this jazz-like club kind of vibe, back of the cafeteria kid kind of thing going on. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I also checked out um, this performance of Cosmic Debris, and that kind of subs up that 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 po- poetic snarkiness that I'm talking about. Because the whole time, like, and again, if you're a big Zappa fan, I don't mean to offend you. This is just my first impression, and this is somebody who genuinely wants to get into Frank Zappa and see what it, what all the fuss is about. But when I watch this video, it's like he's talking, and he's like, "I'm smart, man, and if you if you are down with this vibe, you're you're stupid." And, I, I am I'm making an ass out of myself, but I just I don't get the the vibe. That was horrible. I don't edit these videos, so that's gonna stay in. But it's just some jilted back of the cafeteria stuff that I can't get into. I'm just being honest, and I'm looking forward to maybe some of you changing my mind. And that was stupid what I just said. But what I want to say about the actual music that I've heard is that I tend to to be to favor bands that that focus on song craft. Uh, And I don't mean to say that Frank Zappa was a bad songwriter because the legacy of his career and the fact that I'm talking about him all these years after his death is evidence that he was good at songwriting. But when I say songcraft, I mean like the Beatles that had the song and it was it was an it was just a simple, beaming, perfect, crafted object that they put out. And I just you know, I I think that there's a talent to being able to do something with three chords instead of 15 chords and again these are just my first impressions but it seems to me that zappa lean more towards the 15 chords things and i also don't think that zappa would give a fuck about what i think about him and i don't think most fans would give a fuck about what i think about it and i got a little riled up in this video but like i say i'm looking forward to hearing um what you think of about frank zappa and how you could guide me along the lines of trying to get into it so share share with me any videos that you have any albums you'd like me to check out uh any interviews or documentaries or articles or books please send them my way because i would greatly appreciate that and before i talk myself further into a hole with all you fine frank zappa people out there uh i just want to thank you for watching this video uh check out some of my other stuff if you feel like it like the video and subscribe to the channel if you feel like it as well and i just want to announce that i will be doing another live show uh next friday and it's kind of going to be a show that's right off the theme of anything I'm done. I'm going to be sharing with you the top. I'm going to be discussing and sharing with you what I feel are the top 10 Canadian bands of all time. Um, as a Canadian, I feel um, I feel like it's my patriotic duty, first and foremost. But also as a Canadian, I just want to say that I've been listening to nothing but American news for the last year. And I feel like uh, I feel like it's maybe I've been looking at the demographics of my channel. A lot of you guys are American. I just want to share some Canadian shit and get your thought on that. So if you want to check out the live stream next Friday and have a beer with me, please do so. I've gone way over the time that I intended for this video. I've made an ass out of myself. I need to go grocery shopping. And this video is over.